In this video, we're going to talk about the workflow of importing a PowerPoint into Adobe Captivate 9. Okay, this comes from a request I put out on Twitter where I just sent out a message, uh, want, to, want me to make an Adobe Captivate YouTube video? Just use CP9 video with a description of what you want to see. And um, I'm hoping that the response will be a little bit greater this time now that it's in the video. But Christian Lee did reply. And Chris said, Paul, I'd like to see your best practice tips for importing and working with PowerPoint. Thanks, Chris. So uh, I think that in the ability to import a, a PowerPoint file into Adobe Captivate is a great way for you to ramp up your ability to create e-learning. But in the long run, my recommendation is as you continue to develop your skills as an Adobe Captivate e-learning designer, you're going to want to start doing most of this in Captivate and, and really stop relying on PowerPoint to create your, your e-learning courses. Captivate is a great tool for e-learning. PowerPoint is a great tool for giving presentations. The two are actually different. So let's get started. I'm going to close that off here. Now I happen to have a PowerPoint that I created for um, a little learning opportunity that I had while taking a college course in training, uh, teaching and training adults. And uh, this was my final assignment, and I think I did fairly well. What I was doing was teaching resort Spanish, and I think it's really important for um, people who go on vacation to Spanish-speaking countries to at least try to use a little bit of Spanish. And I think it shows respect to the locals that live there and uh, it shows that you're willing to make an effort. Um, this is a pretty straightforward uh, presentation. I used it for a classroom exercise, but I think we can convert this to e-learning, and I think that's the case you'll probably run into in most cases with, uh, with, a, with having to import a PowerPoint into Captivate. You're taking a classroom course, or an instructor-led course, if you will, and importing it into Captivate so you can quickly turn it into something you can put online. Now, I've created um, a blank slide as well because I think that's important. When you're, when you're importing into Captivate, you're going to need to also create some additional content as well. More on that later, but I've just, uh, in fact, I'm going to take this title out of here too. So I just have a blank slide to be included with my course here and I'm just going to go through yep I've got all my stuff here the truth is there will be no role play because this is an online course instead we'll be doing things like knowledge checks and quizzes at the end of the uh, or during and at the end of the course so I'm going to take that slide out and so that all looks good to me so my recommendation first of all do a little bit of work within the PowerPoint itself. Give yourself a blank slide because you're going to need to create additional content and obviously save yourself the trouble by deleting anything that isn't going to go into your e-learning course. So let me just save this. Go over to Adobe Captivate. So really all you need to do is just open up Captivate and from the splash screen here uh, just click the From PowerPoint and click Create. Find your PowerPoint file and click on Open. And then you'll be presented with the Convert Microsoft PowerPoint Presentations window. And you can keep uh, certain things like you can set up to maintain aspect ratio, which is what I would recommend. Uh, the name of this project is, is here. And, you know, we've already done the work to the PowerPoint itself. And how do you want to advance the slide? Well, if you select on mouse click, it's going to put a click box over top of every slide. So the user will just click on the screen to move to the next slide. I want to do something a little bit more me. And I'm going to put like a continue button on each page so that people can navigate through the course, um, you know, a little bit more intuitively. So I'm going to actually take that off for now and just leave it as automatically. 
And I'm going to keep this linked because if I do make a change to the PowerPoint and I want to update the e-learning course, I would like to retain the ability to do round tripping between the, the two. So let's click on OK. So there we go. We have all our slides. It almost looks like we're in PowerPoint because that's where I last saw this PowerPoint. And uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some navigation controls. Essentially what you have here is 21 slides with background images from the PowerPoint. Now, uh, in this particular case, this PowerPoint was pretty static. Because I was doing um, sort of a final exam for my teaching and training adult certification, I, uh, I didn't want to be overburdened with a lot of special effects and, and, and neat animations and all that stuff. I kept it real clean and simple. Um, but obviously, if you had one of those uh, courses, you would have the opportunity to import in a high fidelity version of those PowerPoints with all the animations and tricks and magic and all that good stuff. But this is pretty static. So basically what I've got here is uh, just a bunch of static images. And now I'm going to simply add in um, a continue button. And we'll go over to properties. And with the button, we want to give it a proper title. So we're going to call it continue. You could call it next or, or whatever you prefer. Uh, choose your font and you can choose, you can actually uh, change, um, you know, in Adobe Captivate 9, you can actually have rollover effects. So maybe in, uh, in this version, the color changes, as you can see here, that's fine. And the action for this will be go to next slide. I like to check off hand cursor because that way when you move your mouse over that button, you'll be able to tell that it's a clickable object. And I also like to disable the click sound. And I'm just going to position this um, somewhere around here at the bottom. It doesn't have to be the very bottom, just a little bit off there. And we're going to copy this and then paste it onto all the remaining slides. Okay, so we have uh, our continue button on all of the slides in this course. And uh, what are we going to want to do next? Well, I won't actually record this at this point here, but what you would typically do at this point is record or create some narration, uh, either using your own microphone and voice or uh, set it up with uh, text-to-speech technology that's built into Adobe Captivate. I'll do one slide for you to give you an example. With text-to-speech, of course, um, I'll use Julie's voice. And I'm going to just say, welcome to Resort Spanish. Click Continue to begin. Very simple. We'll generate the audio for that. That should be appropriate. We'll close. Switch back to a timeline view. Um, one of the things, and actually I should have done this before, is made sure the timing was for the rest of the slide for all those Continue buttons. Um, but for our purposes today, we'll just assume that I did that. Now remember, I imported this blank background. I actually don't need a continue button in there. Um, but what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to hide this slide because it's not going to be part of the course. But I need the background from it, and I'll show you why now. So after we've given people a little bit of instruction, and I would record my own voice teaching people how to say, for example, hello in Spanish is hola. You know, and I'd give them some examples and give them an opportunity to practice on their own. My name is Mi Llamo. Um, Encantado is the masculine form of pleased to meet you. And Encantada is the feminine form of pleased to meet you. So at this point, I'm actually going to insert a knowledge check. And let's do that now. So from our quiz drop-down menu, 
we're going to choose knowledge check slide and we'll make this a multiple choice just one of those for now is fine click OK so this is OK but the problem is as you can see it doesn't match the rest of the, uh, the, the course pages um, and that's because of course this didn't come from that PowerPoint slide but that's okay we're gonna go back to that blank one and I'm just gonna right click on it and copy the background and then I'm gonna to return to that multiple choice knowledge check question and then right click again in the blank spot and hit paste and what this does is it now pastes that background into the background there so that's now available for multiple choice and you can change a few things as necessary uh, for example the font may be different but you know certainly the color it might be more appropriate to choose white for the title and we're going to obviously have to resize the, the question box here let's just move that up to there and we'll move this right there so the question for this knowledge check will be let's just think of something here what is the masculine version of and I'll put quotation marks here pleased to meet you in Spanish and I should capitalize the S of course in Spanish since that's a proper way to do that and I'm going to put in on the quiz properties panel I'm going to change the number of answers to four and I'm also going to shuffle those answers so that I get a random version of this knowledge check every time uh, we run the course I'm also going to put a correct caption on success we're going to go to the next slide but um, let's change this from infinite attempts to two attempts there'll be a retry message which you can see here on the screen and we'll include one failure message which will be simply incorrect click anywhere or press Y to continue and that continue won't be to the next slide but instead back to where they can learn what it is that they obviously didn't remember so we'll jump back to the beginning of this lesson where we learn about hola mi amo encantado and encantada so jump to slide and that would be slide five so now we have a, a nice simple uh, knowledge check here let me put those correct answers in so the correct answer the masculine form of incan of pleased to meet you is encantado and we'll throw in the feminine version as a contrast sorry a on the end and we'll just put some wrong answers in there just to uh, Me llamo. Hola. So we have a, a knowledge check, and of course, you could now duplicate this slide and uh, use this for other knowledge checks throughout the course. Once you're at the end, we get our, to our summary slide, and now we can actually insert, let's say, a short quiz. So let's do. Um, a proper question slide and let's do three questions so obviously you would probably want more for mathematical reasons but we'll just do three questions and what will happen of course is we'll have those same question types so again you'll see the the, the wrong background here so we're going to uh, I'm not sure if it's still yeah so we can just paste those backgrounds into these slides as well 
And we can do the same for our quiz results slide. That doesn't look too bad actually right from the start. I'm going to change the, uh, the properties of that text, make it a white title, and do the same thing for these question slides here. And I'm not going to shuffle these answers, and I'm not even going to write the answers. We're just going to leave this as is for now, uh, just so we can test out the functionality here. So everything should work pretty good. Let's just do a preview of this course. We'll do the whole project. So um, there's an example of my narration. You'd probably want something a little nicer sounding and especially later when it comes to speaking Spanish I'm not sure that the text-to-speech agent would do a very good job but let's hit continue anyway so now we would hear my voice explaining why learning la uh, learning Spanish is important and we'll see uh, a little bit and of course I can put right in the narration at the end of each slide click continue click continue to go to the next slide and so now we'll learn about hola and me llamo, my name is, pleased to meet you, encantado, pleased to meet you, encantada. And now we have a knowledge check. What is the masculine version of pleased to meet you in Spanish? So you can see it's randomized it here. Uh, let's get it wrong first. Encantada. Oh, no, that's incorrect. Let's try again. Encantado. That's correct. And of course, I line that up better. I can click anywhere to continue and now I can continue with the course till I get to the final quiz. So we'll just pass this, we'll choose the right answer, correct, number two, correct, and number three, get that correct as well. And then we have our quiz results slide. Again, I would spend a little bit more time finessing the location of some of these text boxes and making sure the fonts all match and everything looks good. And of course, I could review my quiz or continue at this point. But I think that's, you know, a pretty basic workflow for uh, working with PowerPoint files and importing them into Captivate and dealing with, of course, things like question slides and knowledge checks. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And hey, if you thought this video was useful, interesting, fun, hilarious, go ahead and click the like button.